The Supreme Court is one of America's most obscure and recluse institutions. Lawsuits seem to mysteriously enter its imposing white marble edifice, where important decisions made far from the eye of the public eventually emerge. We call it the highest court in the land, or the court of last resort, because if you don't like their decision, there's nowhere else to turn. So how does a case get there? Like the court itself, it can be mysterious and complicated. We have a sense that the Supreme Court is a bastion of justice where all wrongs will eventually be righted. That may be a bit idealistic. While the court intends to embody the blindness of justice, it often bends toward political ideology and, on several occasions throughout history, they got it completely wrong. Still, when we have a lawsuit and we don't like the outcome, we cry, appeal it to the Supreme Court. Yet, appealing to the Supreme Court is not that simple nor that common. The Supreme Court receives around 10,000 requests each year and, on average, takes about 100 a whopping 1%. If your case is lucky enough to be in the 1%, then it's taken one of two typical routes to the Supreme Court. First, original jurisdiction. Original jurisdiction is where the Supremes have the ability to hear the case at the outset. These are usually not the most exciting cases, like which state owns which waterway, but they are often important to the states. The more common route is by appeal. Lawsuits start in a trial in either state or federal courts. From the trial courts, they are appealed to the appellate courts. Since America is a union of states with different court systems, you might imagine that sometimes states disagree. This is where the Supreme Court gets involved. For instance, one state might say, we want a law that requires mud flaps on our highways. Then every truck that enters that state needs to stop at the border and buy mud flaps. Inconvenient. Or, in a case which recently went before the Supreme Court, we have some states that recognize same-sex marriage and other states that don't. But when people move between states, their marital rights change. In America, we like our union and we like our consistency, so the Supreme Court is there to help us ensure this consistency. How do you know if a case is qualified for the Supreme Court? It has to be a matter of law, not a matter of fact. Juries decide fact, judges interpret law. Did OJ kill his ex-wife? This is a matter of fact. He was there or he wasn't. Glove fit or it didn't. Can a business hold religious convictions? If so, does a law forcing the employer to provide contraception constitute discrimination? This is a matter of law. If the issue at hand comes down to interpreting the Constitution, essentially America's operating manual, then you can bet it's a matter of law. So you've got a case that's a matter of law, you've appealed it from the trial courts to the appellate courts, and now there are inconsistent rulings. You're in, right? Not so fast. The Supremes get to decide which cases they want to hear. The nine justices conference and look over the cases in a secret meeting. If four of the nine justices raise their hand, the Supreme Court will take the case. The process is slow, complicated, and obtuse, but somewhat by design. We don't let juries decide matters of law because we don't want the law to change based upon the whims of 12 people or changing trends in society. It's deliberate and cautious because decisions by the Supreme Court often stand for decades.